Welcome back, Tucson Acres here. Just got done doing the burnout of the boiler yesterday, and uh, today we're we're gonna go ahead and actually clean out the inside of it. This is my first season, uh, first summer of a shutdown. I cleaned it out when I initially got it. It was a used unit, and now uh, the end of my first burning season. I got a lot of work to do, and uh, I know there's some other videos out there. I haven't seen one with a boiler quite this size. And uh, with this particular kind of unit, the last month or so, it sits and smolders a lot. So we, we got a lot, a lot, a lot of creosote buildup. And a lot of it's this real, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a glassy, and up here it's really bad. You can see how shiny it is even in the dark, which I don't think there's any way for me to get that out of there. My previous video, I showed the actual burnout stuffed it with cardboard got it roasting hot and uh today you know, it's been just 24 hours and the stuff that did get really hot is coming off super easy but there's still a lot of stuff in here that it's gonna be a pain in the butt so i got an arsenal of tools that we'll be using I've had this scraper blade on here, or not on it, but available for probably 15 years, and I think this is actually going to be perfect for it. Got the big old wire wheel, got the whole monkey suit and hood, and the respirator. I got a fan sitting out there that I'm going to put in the unit, and uh, today's today's a, a perfect day for it, just because I mean we're in the first week of June. But it's probably only 60 degrees out, so hopefully it's not too hot in there. I hate when my glasses get all foggy, so I'm going to try to use a hood instead, along with the respirator in the suit. But I'll get it all set up, and uh, we'll get to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is shovel all the uh, ash out of there from the burnout yesterday. I had already emptied it out yesterday morning, but we'll get the bulk of that out of there. Give you a quick peek in there. Yeah, this is gonna suck. Not looking forward to this. Definitely gotta wear a respirator. Even doing this light work outside the boiler, I don't like just a face mask, but. So we're getting there. Now I'm gonna get the rest of the tools set up. And the fan, I'm gonna put a fan right in the door blowing out. That should help uh, with the dust and being able to see. And it's still like 85 degrees in there from the burnout, at least. So hopefully I don't end up fogging up my mask too much. All right, well, I think I got everything set up. Fan's in there and I'll start using that once I get inside. We got a dustpan, a bucket out here, or a tote to get rid of extra crap. All sorts of different kind of scrapers, the wire wheel, the sawzall with the scraper attachment. You got my hood, respirator, ear pro. And uh, you know, it's just one of those things. There's real no two ways about it. It's just gonna suck. And you just gotta jump in and get it done. I'll get you up here on the tripod. And uh, I'm gonna try to adjust this so that we can see what's going on inside and it's gonna be loud so I'm probably gonna have to edit now, unfortunately this might all be for not I know some people do it and some don't but up in the top here of this particular boiler it's got cross tubes and it's literally there's just no way to get above that you can't reach it from the top you can't get to the top there's probably a, a solid, you know, six, eight inches up here that 
goes all the way back to where the baffle is, the damper, and then there's two rows of these crossover tubes for water to flow through the flame. You know, so does it really do any good to have the bottom half clean and not the top half? I honestly, I don't know. I know some people don't touch them at all. Some people clean the crap out of them. So I'm just going to try to get the bulk of what I can and uh, just go from there. And uh, maybe next year. I mean, th uh, to, to be perfectly honest, this is my first burn season. So, you know, I've never dealt with it. And the unit itself was a 2008 unit. So here it is, was at uh, 14 years old already. And uh, I'll do a video soon of the uh, process I went through to make it usable again to begin with. And most of the steel, I stripped it right down. I mean, all the way completely down. All the side panels were off, all the insulation was out. And I could, you know, I had it full access to the water jacket from the outside. And I, I cut a big hole in the top of the water jacket, you know, two foot by three foot, so I could see inside of it, because, I mean, it was rusted out at the chimney. And uh, the, the burn chamber looked okay from what I could see. There was a few pitting here and there. So it wouldn't surprise me if in the next year or two, or even this coming season, I, I spring a leak somewhere. But it's all quarter inch plate, and most of it looked really good. So just going to kind of have to take it little by little, I guess, year by year, and see what happens. But... Uh, here we go. Yeah. Won't be much talking from me during this. And to be perfectly honest, this hood might be coming off. I don't know. We'll see. I, I kind of want to see what it looks look like. I'm going to move the camera back. Yeah. See how it works out, I don't know.
there's no doubt about it. This sucks. That scraper really does help though. The fan ain't really doing a whole lot other than keeping me a little bit cooler, but you know, 85 degrees in there and then cooped up in this thing. All right, I got two more of these uh, scraper blades, brand new, never used. I put a little bit sharper edge on them and rounded the corners, hoping it wouldn't grab as much like that big fat one. This one I figure I'll be able to use on the flatter surfaces a little bit easier. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. The scraper is working great for the bulk of it, but the really heavy caked up stuff, like over here, it's just not doing anything. So I'm not really sure. It's just going to be more manual labor, I guess. Uh, not all that fun, I'll tell you. But it's got to be done. Probably a good thing I do, uh, I'm do. i doing these videos because I'm not sure I would have done this if I wasn't making a video out of it. This is a royal pain in the butt. Like I said, I, I really don't even, even know if it needs it. It definitely wasn't done when I got it used. And who knows how long it was sitting that way. try something different here. I'm gonna try an axe or a hatchet. Just put a little bit of, a little bit of an edge on it. This thing's gonna take two weeks if I keep doing it this way. So the hatchet's definitely working better, faster anyway. Except it's awkward to hang on to sideways. So I've got an old hatchet head laying somewhere in the barn. And I'm gonna weld on a handle to it. And then uh, we'll go from there, see what that does. All right, just under an hour, I just made this guy. Chunk of 3 8 plate, just laying around, put an edge on it tacked it to some chunk of something, probably off a of John Deere tractor. Got random parts laying all over. We're gonna see if that works as a good scraper for this. Give me a little more leverage. And uh, hopefully it'll work. Yeah, this is working great. The only issue, I mean, it's only been a couple minutes. I've already rolled over the edge there. You know, I didn't use hardened steel because I didn't want to damage that, but so I think what I'm gonna do is just keep a, a file just to kind of clean up the edge every time it starts getting rolled over. Doesn't have to be perfect, but man, it makes a huge difference. happy with how this is going except it just won't hold an edge so I'm gonna take a look see if I've got anything hardenable we're actually hard already all right here we go try number two this one 
was an old hatchet head I had laying around. I flattened out the curvature a little bit, ground it to a nice sharp point, uh, but still somewhat flat. So I should be able to get a pretty decent scrape out of it. Use the same chunk of bar, and uh, we'll see how that goes. That other one was working fantastic. It just kept dulling soup after you know a minute. I had to stop and resharpen it. So I'm hoping that that hatchet had uh, a little bit harder steel. Should be. Get the respirator and crap on, we'll get going. Yeah, it's too sharp. It's just digging into that steel. I just hit it with the flap disc, took the point off of it. We'll see. Much better. All right, folks. This hatchet idea is working great. But it's still a lot of elbow grease, especially in a chamber this big. Pop you off the stand here. The sun decided to come out, so it's going to make it really hard to see anything. And I think the oh yeah, lens is covered in dust. Probably haven't seen anything. Come on. Focus! Alright. So, it is definitely working much, much, much better. Why is this... Okay, so that's the hatchet, and it is working fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, working really, really good. Well, you can see up here, I can only get so far. Like, there's a tube right in the middle there, and then there's, and it's almost impossible to get up there. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Probably just end up leaving that area. But for the rest of it, Hatchet's doing great, and I will update once I'm done. All right, folks, I'm gonna level with you. That's probably never gonna happen again. And, uh, as soon as I get out of this thing, I'll explain why. And uh, I just, I, I don't see the necessity. It just doesn't make sense to me. I told y'all in the beginning that I got this thing used and it had sat outside full, I mean completely packed full of ash and creosote. You know, it was, nobody bothered to clean it out. They just unhooked it banged it up real good and moved it. They never put a cover on the top, so it was getting rained in. So I've scraped it out once before. And uh, when I get in there and show you what I mean, I don't really believe that the creosote is all that corrosive. I think it's only corrosive when it's mixed with water. I'll explain that here in just a quick second. Wow, that was one messy, crazy job. So, this time, just like the first time, I mean, this time was the first time I burned in it, but, so, the sidewalls, perfectly clean. I mean, nothing. Same thing on the back wall, there is no brown, no rust. And last time I had scraped some of these tubes as well, but I got up a little ways and uh, got around the door, the door jam itself. And there is no brown, no rust, other than right down there. You can just barely see it, and that's where the chimney is. And that's where water had gotten in it the first time. Same thing here, there's just a few little pits and stuff and uh, a little bit back here I didn't do quite as good job scraping this part but um, very 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 little rust and or pitting anywhere other than where water had gotten in here from time to time um, there's no holes I've actually seen the back side of this burn chamber in the water tank because I had to dig into it 
uh, cut the top off. So I don't think I am ever going to get in there and do this again. I'm just going to start, you know, about a month, month and a half from shutting down, start putting that creosote burner in there or catalyst or whatever the crap's called and just kind of burn it out little by little and do a couple major burns near the end and let it be. I mean, you can see there is no rust whatsoever. And that stuff has been caked on there for I don't even know how long. I mean, like I said, it's an 08 model, I'm betting. Now I'm afraid the only thing I did was put all these fresh scratches and introduce another way for it to rust. So I'm gonna get in here with a little bit of, a little bit of oil and uh, kind of just give it a light coating now that it's show, you know fresh steel showing. But yeah, that, that's probably never gonna happen again. I think I've been out here scraping in this thing for uh, five plus hours. I, I know I set up before lunch and I think I started right at noon and it's five something in the evening, five right on the money and th that was no fun. And like I said, I just don't think it's necessary. If, if somebody knows, you know, if if there's a reason why you should do this specifically, I mean, I, I get that um, the creosote kind of blocks heat transfer a little bit here and there, but is it really that big of a deal, you know, to, to do this once a year? I mean, after the first couple burns, it's going to be right back. So is it really necessary? Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to do it again. But, uh, you know... Teach his own. I hope somebody out there can uh, throw some advice this way. I mean, this is, that was my first season. You know, I've watched a ton of YouTube videos on it on using a boiler. That's that's a huge. That's the biggest one Woodmaster makes. Um, if you do want to clean it out, I'll tell you what. That hatchet welded onto a piece of steel. That right there made the difference, made it possible. It's still a ton of work. Um, I'll probably, I don't even think I'm gonna bother with a wire wheel at all. I'm just gonna slap some oil on it and call it good. You know, if, if this helped anybody out, please, uh, you know, consider like, subscribe, share, and uh, please leave me comments. You know, if, if you got thoughts on this, ideas, um, I don't see a reason to ever do it again, but maybe somebody else has a reason that they do it. And granted, you know, the huge, I mean, five foot deep, five foot circumfer or five foot diameter burn chamber. You know, I, I could see a smaller burn chamber. I mean, it's harder to get into, but might be easier. I don't know. Uh, but that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you watching. Uh, hopefully this helps out.